There's a few things you need to be aware of in this newest 1.5 update, and this video shows 5 most critical tips that will help you have a better experience in Genshin Impact. It can be a little daunting trying to understand everything that's going on with the new housing feature, but there's actually not that many things to keep track of, and one of the first steps you need to do would be by first enabling allow direct join from the map once you're inside the serenity pot, so that anyone who is on your friend list can visit your realm without needing your permission, even if you're offline. And the reason why you want to do this is that they can help you out with any furniture you're currently crafting and speed up the process by up to 4 hours. And you can also do this as well by clicking on any of your friend's portraits and selecting the option to visit their realm. Next, definitely want to pay attention to the quest journal because it basically gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can achieve trust rank 3 and at least 4,500 adeptal energy points, which are going to determine how many realm currency coins you're going to generate per each hour. Obviously, there's a lot of quests here, but you're going to hit a stopping point eventually when you get to the third round of the journal, and by that point, you will have a good idea of how to proceed next and even reach trust rank 4 without needing to rely on the journal too much. Now, this is the only part where things can get tricky, and that will be the items you should be purchasing from the Realm Depot store, and probably the most important one would be the Vial of Adeptal Speed that will automatically complete any furnishing you're currently crafting, and what's even more important, every single day this offer resets and you can get 5 more vials for 50 coins. Of course, you could instead dedicate all of your Realm currency towards acquiring new blueprints, but the idea here is to use the vials so that you can get more furniture and then immediately allocate it onto your Realm so that you can gain more Adeptal Energy Points, which in return increase the amount of currency you make per hour. Think of it like investing into a better money-making engine that brings results sooner if you can complete and put down more furnishings around your realm. And the biggest reason why you want to speed up the rank improvement of your adeptal energy and the amount of coins you can produce would be the realm treasure shop where you can get stuff like fragile resin or even artifact experience potions. So if you're interested in getting your hands on these awesome items as soon as possible, there's a reason why Mihoyo have added these special vials into the shop so that you can create more furniture without needing to wait for too long. So with the 50 coins you will allocate each day for the speed vials, any leftover currency should be used to either acquire blueprints from the shop or wait until the weekend arrives and locate the traveling salesman, which is going to offer some awesome things like more animals or even blueprints. One thing to keep in mind with the blueprints is that it's recommended to purchase either the 3 star or 4 star plans first because they award the most trust rank and adeptal energy points, but one sneaky thing to look out for are the blueprints which produce walls, flooring and ceiling because while you do earn trust rank points on the initial crafting, placing these items in your realm won't give the much needed adeptal energy because you're actually replacing the furniture with a different one. Finally, there's two secret merchants you can locate in the world and one of them can be found in Liyue region by visiting this location on the map and the same can be done within Mondstadt city where you can use the Mora and acquire the blueprints. Basically, the first steps in the housing journey can feel a bit daunting but by using the Serenity quest journal and getting at least 4500 adeptal energy points and trust rank 3, you will have a good overview of everything the housing feature has to offer and at the same time, make sure to keep in mind some of the more tricky nuances like speed vials and blueprint efficiency. But crafting comes with the cost of deforestation or in this case, punching and shaking the trees all around the world. We shouldn't really be calling this woodcutting, but nearly any tree in the world can now be attacked for exactly 3 logs of wood, and while there's plenty of different tree types you can find, the actual process of farming these items is quite simple, because after attacking exactly 10 of them, you can go back to the initial tree you attacked and start the process all over again, and some have reported you can even do this faster by simply teleporting back and forth, or even by relogging into the game. So while the trees can be reset without too much effort, looking for a certain wood type can take a while, and even if we have a lot of community tools out there, you can also check out something that Mihoyo themselves have created, and you can use this tool not just for locating any resource in the world, but also find out where a specific type of tree grows. Now as for assembling the ultimate woodcutting squad, it's recommended you use two animal characters for their resonance bonus, which will decrease the stamina consumption and even boost your run speed. And when it comes to the tree abuser, polearm characters have the fastest attack animations, but in some special places, like when you're farming the bamboo trees, using charged attacks with a claymore is definitely more fun and productive. And that's basically all you need to know for infinite wood production. Now it's just a matter of time finding your favorite farming locations and using these techniques. 
One of the most exciting things that came in 1.5 is the Dream Solvent, which solves the headache problem we've been facing with weekly boss drops, and this item here works exactly like Dust of Azoth, except you can only transform the ascension materials of the same boss, and because of this restriction, we need to consider some things. First of all, you can get a single Dream Solvent as a reward for completing Zhongli's story quest, which introduces the new weekly boss, but besides this method, you're left at the mercy of a random chance, much like you would expect with a prototype weapon, except it's still not clear how much of a better or worse drop rate this Dream Solvent has, but it's a good idea to treat it more of a luxury than an abundant resource, at least for the first few weeks. Now, it's also important to ask yourself what your priorities are, because while we had the chance to farm some of these weekly bosses for nearly half a year, if we've been playing since the game has launched, the new Geo Bishop boss has only begun dropping his ascension materials, and if you're thinking of getting Eula or even any other future character, it's probably a good idea to just sit on these Dream Solvents for now and see what materials they will need for their talents if you're interested in raising them. But aside from this consideration, it's good to see such a wonderful addition be introduced into the game, and now we can have a little more control over our character talents as long as we don't get abused by a bad drop rate. It's safe to say that the newest boss, Ejdaha, is truly one of the most fearsome foes we had to battle, and since this activity is going to be a weekly one-time thing, learning a few important things can help you make these fights feel less punishing and more bearable. Now obviously, bringing a shield character is a no-brainer, and there's a reason why Zhongli makes this fight less challenging, but if you do not have the Geo Archon, the upcoming Free Diona from Energy Amplifier event can definitely act as a great substitute, but then there's also Xinyan, Beito, and Noel, who can help with shielding your teammates. But even even strong shields won't protect you from some of these devastating attacks, and a couple of important mechanics to keep in mind would be the time this Geo Bishop decides to switch to the next phase, where the only thing you should be doing is running away as far as possible, because up to 6 unavoidable earthquake attacks will be created, and you want to be in a safe position when this is happening. And if you fight with a melee character, make sure to do this from behind the boss where the tail is at, because this is the spot that gives you least amount of trouble when trying to avoid some of these hard to dodge attacks, and if you're using a ranged character, just try to keep a distance and dodge some of the incoming attacks, it's safe to say that ranged versus melee definitely feels easier to do. And don't forget that food exists for a reason. It's time to dust off your cooking pan and cook some of those Adepti Temptations or plenty other dishes that provide offensive buffs and even a good defensive dish or a potion from the alchemy table will provide you an easier experience against this challenging foe. Finally, even though we have only seen two phases of Hydro and Electro, before you enter the domain, you will notice special color-coded symbols on the door that signifies which elements the boss will be using, and we can expect in the nearest future for these symbols to change depending on which element the boss is going to have in its phases, so keep this in mind before you create your suicide squad. Saving money is great, but what about memory? With 1.5, you can now go over to your language tab and select the voiceover packages you want to keep or delete, which in return should free up the much needed storage that even personal computer users need to look out for, not to mention those who are playing on their mobile devices. But to quickly summarize, the new housing feature can feel a little daunting at first, but by using the quest journal found in the Serenity Pot and following the tasks, you can easily get to a certain trust rank and adeptal energy to start producing the much needed realm currency for things like speed vials to instantly complete your furniture and the more enticing stuff like fragile resin and artifact experience potions. And when you're ready to head out into the world and beat up some trees, keep in mind the reset count and use community tools to find the wood you're looking for. Then there's the new dream solvent, which can now help you transmute any unwanted boss ascension materials, but thinking about the future characters and the new boss could be a good idea to save up on these solvents, at least for a few weeks, to see what ascension materials you're getting. Finally, for the big bad Ejdaha itself, there's a lot to deconstruct about this ancient foe, but general tip would be to always run away when it enters a new phase, so you don't get decimated by the earthquake attacks, and use food and a combination of ranged and shield characters to make your fights easier. With so many new activities introduced in 1.5, Genshin has never felt more alive than now, and compiling a list of things to look out for was extremely fun to do, but if there's any mistakes or critical things left out, make sure to check out the pinned comment below the video. Also, if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe to this channel by hitting the bell notification on, and don't forget to gently press the like button. And as always, you can find more useful stuff about Genshin by following us on Twitter, link in the description. Thanks for watching the video, and see you very soon.